Hey guys, I'm Megan. Thanks for stopping by the Backyard Garden. Today is May 5th, 2021. It's about 15 degrees out there. And let me take you for a tour around to show you what I'm growing. Okay guys, so we're gonna start on the side of the garden shed. So I do have some plants over here that I'd like to show you. So I've got a big chamomile. We've got some Brussels sprouts. I just threw these guys in. We've got another Brussels sprout. Another Brussels sprout. And a hosta that just kind of showed up last year. So that's our little along the garden shed kind of thing. I've got my, uh, oops, if I can get it to work here. Nope my compost bin here so that's one of my compost bins and then that's just the side of the shed there's one of our little lanterns it's uh the cord goes up to here that's it's solar powered all right we've got radishes in there i've picked a few and eaten them pretty pretty tasty you can actually roast radishes, you guys. Sometimes it's like they're too tiny to even bother, but I did have some really lovely ones last fall that I roasted. And let's move on. The plan is to grow climbing beans along the shed here, so that's what the post is for. But it's still too cold to put my climbing beans in, sort of, because I did put some in over there, which I'm going to show you after. Alright, so these are nasturtium. They're a flower. They'll get nice bright colorful jewel toned flowers on them. And you can eat the leaves. The leaves are peppery, kind of like arugula. <clears throat> Speaking of arugula, there's some that's come up from seed. Now look at the difference. So I thinned this side, which is actually still pretty close together. And then look at this. It's just like a carpet. I've got to get in here and thin it. There's no point in leaving stuff like this, guys, because it will actually just choke each other out, and then you'll be left with, like, even less arugula. So get in there and thin them out. And you can eat your thinnings, so... Something like that, like... That's tasty. Totally edible. Throw it in a salad. Alright. Let's go along here. We've got our bok choy, grown from seed. Also needs to be thinned out a little bit. And look at this, you guys. It's purple bok choy. Look at the color on that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, this is Mizuna. So it's got the little spiky leaves. Mizuna is very mild tasting. Um, you can eat it raw or you can cook it. You can saute it with a little butter and garlic. It's delicious. Um, only really started growing it last year uh, and loved it. It was great lovely tasty green so spinach so <clears throat> trick I learned last year and I will do this again these spinach were planted in September um, and then they stayed over the winter in the ground I didn't cover them I didn't do anything and they have been fabulous this spring and I did go and put more spinach seedlings in around them so all of those guys have germinated now and we're starting to get Little spinach is coming off of them. This is my oregano beside it. And then over here, you guys, I've got a horseradish plant. I've always wanted to grow one. So it's similar to like a ginger or a turmeric. You get a root, throw it in a pot. Um, it should get nice and bushy and big. And then at the end of the season, I'll just empty out the pot. I will save part of the tuber so that I can replant it, and then the rest of the tuber is horseradish, which I will grind up and figure out how to use. <laughs> Jives, looking lovely. Okay, <clears throat> this is our rain barrel. We do have two, so there's one here, and there's one completely across the garden. 
over there. Um, that one gets more rain because it's off the house, but it's very handy to have this one here because it's right in the middle of my garden. Um, and as much as possible, I'm trying to use just the rainwater, not, you know, tap water. Being conscientious of the environment. So here are those climbing beans that I said it was too early to plant. These are called black coat runner beans. Um, last year, they didn't do well at all because I planted them in the spring and it got really hot here. Went up to 32 degrees at the beginning of June um, and all my beans frizzled out. I didn't get flowers on them. They weren't pollinated. I got no beans. Um, in fact, last year I had an entire bean teepee like this covered in plants and not a single bean off of it. And I believe it's because I didn't have pollinators and I believe it's because it was too hot. But every year's the learning curve, right? So we'll just try again. So I have put these guys in. It is a bit early. If I need to, I'll cover them with a pot or a blanket um, so that they don't get frost burnt. There's the sage. It has a touch of frost on it. See the brown? That's from like last week when we got snow and frost. But the plant is fine. Nice cilantro. I'm super pleased with this cilantro, you guys. Like, I don't know, just looking at it makes me happy. I just, yeah, so excited. This is a thyme plant, just a classic thyme that I grew from seed last year. And this is a plant I bought. It's a lemon thyme. And it really is lemony, it's delicious. So, we've got chicory, another black coat runner bean, and we've got some more Brussels sprouts. So these guys should be here in the garden until probably December. They're in here for the long haul, you guys. Hear the chickadees? That's my favorite. <laughs> so this is another one of our compost bins. Again, it's like right in the middle of the garden. So I'm not having to haul stuff too far. This is also a sunny corner of the garden, um, so compost, even through the winter, it's warm in there and it's continuing to compost. Here is an artichoke, you guys. So in case you missed it, artichokes um, usually take two years to produce artichokes. Um, so the plant will grow the first year and then the second year it will produce artichokes, but we can't keep artichokes alive through the winter here. So what you have to do is plant them, um, or you could leave them in a container, but you've got to make sure that they're getting outside and that they're getting 120 hours of between 1 and 10 degree temperature. Otherwise they won't produce artichokes. So that's just a little tip trick if you want to try growing artichokes. The peas have all come up. They're looking lovely. This is great pea weather too. I mean, it's a little cooler than normal, but the peas don't care. In fact, they like this weather. It's been raining all week and it's cool. We've got new ones just starting to poke through the ground here. And over here, there's a new pea coming up. Where are ya? There's one over there. Some more artichokes. Beside the peas and stuff is this bed where I have green onion. We've been picking and eating those. They're delish. I've got Swiss chard. Look at the colors in there, you guys. And then the rest of this stuff was stuff I just left. So there's bok choy at the very far end um, and some turnips. And so that is feeding the bees. Um, pollinators, I've seen a bunch of pollinators on there. You might not see any right now because it's a bit overcast. Um, but that was the plan. Eventually I will rip that out um, once things get sort of more up and growing. Because right now I want to make sure that I've got a source of pollen for bees. Okay, this bed beside it. Look at the garlic, you guys stalks on them are quite thick. This is my first year growing garlic. I don't know a whole lot about what things are supposed to look like, 
But that's the joy of it, guys. Just try things and, and see what happens. This guy right here is a uh, Chinese cabbage that survived the winter. Uh, but it looks like it's going to seed already, so we'll eat the leaves. Okay, the rest of this bed is potatoes. Um, and I saw there are a couple that are just starting to pop out here. Let me see if I can show you. That is what it looks like when it first comes out of the ground. It's like a little rosette of leaves. So if you've planted potatoes, watch for that. Um, this is my butterfly milkweed. So the first year you plant it, because I grew it from seed, last year we did not get flowers but we should get flowers this year. And again, that's another great pollinator. You'll see it'll be covered with bees and uh, butterflies. Okay, <clears throat> in this bed here, there are some beets that have been here since last fall. Um, and at this point, I'm not eating the root so much, but I am eating the leaves, the greens, the beet greens, they're delicious. Down at the end, I have a cabbage, which is looking a little sad but hopefully it will be fine. It'll just perk itself back up. I do have a chamomile plant that has sown itself and I'm debating if I'm gonna leave it there or if I'm gonna rip it out. We'll see, I haven't made a decision yet. So we got more beets all along here. I mean, you really could if you wanted to guys, like eat the roots, but they're just really woody, they're really hard. Um, so they're not enjoyable but the leaves are delicious. Another cabbage, threw in a broccoli. I'm hoping that it's just gonna grow quick. Um, broccoli's fairly quick, and then I can have it out of here by like, the end of June. Another cabbage. These are kohlrabi, which I have never grown, nor have I ever eaten. Um, but if you order from Baker Creek Seeds, they always throw in a free seed packet, and <clears throat> this winter it happened to be purple kohlrabi. So it's a brassica, it's part of the like cabbage family. So I thought I'd just give it a try. And I've got one more broccoli down at the end here. Okay, this bed has our broad beans in it. <clears throat> oh, see that? That is four. Our little fairy lights that we have along the top. Kind of nice to have some light in the garden. So the plan is with this bed, you guys. I've got broad beans on it now. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a leaf caught in my throat. <coughs> excuse me. I've got broad beans in it now. And then when those are done, which I'm thinking they'll be done by the end of June, I'm going to put my squash in. Which seems a bit late, but in my records, I've got a note that the squash bug started showing up in June. So if I don't even plant my squash until the squash bug has come and gone, I should be good. And it should be a long enough growing season still to <clears throat> have my squash like pollinate, germinate, produce food, and, and you know do their whole life cycle thing. So let's just get closer to these broad beans because they're just big and fun. The little string is here because they will get quite tall and bushy though so that will give me something I can like tie them up to. I really want you guys to see broad beans because I didn't really know what they were. We had never grown them growing up. I'd never really heard of them much. It's more of a British thing so <clears throat> if you don't know what they are I want to show them to you. <laughs> Put some nasturtium in over here as well again to attract pollinators and you know just because they're pretty. You gotta have nice, pretty things in the garden too. And they're still edible. I always like to plant stuff that you can eat. So this is the lovage. It's technically like a herb, you guys. Um, there's a little bit of color on the leaves, but that doesn't really matter. This tastes a lot like celery. Um, <clears throat> I don't use it raw. You can, you can like, well, I don't know about raw. But like you can use it to cook with. You can just throw it in soups and stews. But I prefer to dry it and powder it. And then use it as a celery alternative in things. Oh, let's listen to the birds again. Yeah. 
he stopped doing it. Okay, so I do have a bean teepee ready to go here. Nothing growing on it yet. Down at the bottom here is spinach. And I did put in some purple bok choy. These were starts, meaning I had started them from seed indoors and then I transplanted them out. Um, and just literally across here, guys, is where the other purple bok choy is that I grew from seed. So <clears throat> I'll keep you updated on that, but you will find while this gives you a head start, um, these plants that I have done from transplant are never quite as healthy or adapted as the ones that I grow from seed. So the plan with these guys was just to get a quick crop in. Like I'm just planting these now. They're going to grow quickly. I'm going to like harvest them probably in a month's time, month and a half's time. And yeah, then we'll be done with them. So, and then something else will go in this bed. This is a Chinese cabbage. Same thing, you guys. Started from seed indoors, transplanted out. This is Mizuna. It's lovely, lovely little spiky flowers. It's a cool plant too, you guys. Once it gets growing, it's like, um, almost like a moss. I don't know how else to describe it. <clears throat> These are little kale. Same idea, just a quick crop. Get her in, get her out. Beets have germinated. So that is what the beet looks like when it first comes through the soil. It's kind of got a little red tinge to it. And they will usually be in clusters because one little beet seed is actually multiple plants. So it's, it's just the way it does things. See so like, those guys, there's like two right there. So you will end up going in and sort of removing one because they will just choke each other out. Some people don't. I mean, you could just try it. Survival of the fittest. Your roots will be smaller though. Even if both survive, the um, beetroot that it produces because they're so close together, kind of like a carrot, right? You don't want your carrots too close together either. And there's a lavender. This lavender I purchased. This lavender I grew from seed last year. So we'll see. I just thought it would be nice to have the two beds and have like lavender plant on each end kind of thing. Again, just so that it looks pretty. Okay, um, last but not least, let's go take a look at what's in our raised beds. All right. So, arugula that has gone to seed, but well, that's fine. We're feeding pollinators and the leaves are still good. They're still super peppery and tasty. These are my Spanish onions. Oh. So, I'm kind of just watching them to see what they do. Because I've never grown onions from seed before. I've always grown them from the little like baby onion bulbs they call those sets but this time I actually started them from seed you can see down at the end here I've got my little containers of them so that was the other thing when I started them from seed I didn't have any idea of like how many I needed to plant or what would how they would germinate um, but yeah so those are onions we love onions, so hopefully we will get a good crop of onions. I don't think I've planted them too close together. Like, they're kind of hands width apart. But again, we'll see. I'm learning. Okay, in this bed, we have broccoli. Broccoli. These are carrots. I'm not sure why I'm saying it like that. Um, cauliflowers, which I most definitely have put in too close together. They're about, let me see if I can show you. They're about a foot apart. So maybe I'll get away with it. But um, I have a feeling those are too close together. Maybe if I'm trimming off the bottom leaves and like pruning it, it'll be okay. 
This is Tatsoi, very high in vitamin C. Um, and the little spoon shaped leaves, that's its natural leaf. Those little round ones are the seed leaves that come out first, but it's so just starting to get its true leaves. I do have oregano in this bed as well. Um, yeah, let's come over here. And maybe we'll try to do a little view of the whole thing. So that's May 5th. That's what's growing in the garden. I really hope this inspires somebody else to like just put some seeds in the ground, you guys. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.